I saw one of these ultrasonic modules for the Pi, an HCSR04 at my uh, local Pi store and thought it would be fun so I picked one up and did some research on it and uh, thought you might be interested in seeing how this works and using it in your own Pi experiments. Let's take a look around. Yeah, the first thing on the tour to notice is it's got a uh, transmitter, T, and a receiver. And it's got four pins. You can see VCC, trigger, echo, and ground. It does run on five volts, so it's kind of an unusual thing. Most of the Pi stuff runs on three volts. So because it runs on five volts, the Pi will supply five volts, but you have to be really careful. You cannot feed back the full five volts into an input pin on the Pi or you'll burn it up. So we have to have a voltage divider, which we'll see back here. There are the four pins. You can see the ground, which is the black wire over here, black wire, that's the first one. The second one is the first part of the voltage divider and that should be the echo, yes, echo. And then the next pin is the trigger which uh, sends out the sonic pulses, it's the thing that starts the sonic pulses running. And then the red wire is just uh, our 5 volts from the Pi. So those are the four connections. Now let's look closely at this voltage divider we have a uh, 4.7k resistor, if my memory serves, coming out of the echo, and it goes down to the yellow wire, which the yellow wire, this yellow wire, which I'm going to wiggle, this yellow wire goes to the Pi, and it's one of our uh, inputs, and then we have a, uh, a uh, 10k ohm resistor right here, which goes to ground. So that's pretty much the wiring. Of course, I'll include diagrams and pictures at the end of the video, but that's the uh, walk around of the hardware component. And then on the Pi side, the four wires going in, we have the, this is the five volts from the Pi, this is the ground. On some, on some things I use pin six as the ground, on some I use pin 30 down here. And on the other side we have the trigger, the blue wire, it looks greenish, but it's blue wire and the, for the trigger and the yellow wire for the echo, as we saw earlier. So that's it for the hardware. Not too terrible. A little bit more complex than some things. Got to really be careful about this 5 volts and using the voltage divider because if you plug the, if you bring back in this uh, uh, echo at 5 volts, it will damage your Pi. So you really, really, really got to be careful with that one. I'm just uh, measuring this. You can see the last measurement. And run it again. It's taking 50 measurements and 329 centimeters and it's just going to that wall over there. I've measured it. It's uh, pretty darn accurate. So let's try something up close. Reposition a little bit. Yes, that should be okay. Run. And seven centimeters. This should be closer to ten. Nine or ten. Run module. And so yeah, um, this is producing much more accurate results. The sensor is only accurate. This sensor right here, sensor module, is only accurate. I've seen different things. Uh, one said one centimeter, and the other said 0.3. Well, having an accuracy up here of you know like nine point. One two eight nine seven six three five whatever is ridiculous, so I I just uh, use the integer uh, of the average, and yeah, it works very well. Let's take a look at the code behind this. There's just a few changes from last time. This is the software behind our higher accuracy readings. And let me say, I really like my Pi, but one of the things it's not is the Pi is not a real-time computer. It is, a, it is a general computer, and it does pretty good with real-time stuff, but there's some ways that we can make it work even better with real-time. And that's what I've done here. I've increased the accuracy of the readings significantly, very significantly. And let's go through how I did that. Okay, so... Up here, uh, just the usual comments, I'm not going to repeat the same old stuff, I'll 
this part of the program has been pretty standard and I'll post some links to earlier videos so you don't have to go through that all over again. Uh, import, uh, GPIO library, okay, standard stuff. Import the time library, again, standard stuff. GPIO board numbering scheme, I prefer that. Uh, some people like the other, but okay, fine. My triggering is on pin 11, my echo is on 13. So, this is where I'm going to trigger the device, and this is where I'm going to listen for the ping to come back. I'm going to take 50 samples, so I get a higher accuracy reading, and I'm going to discard a certain number. So this is my discard number, and I'm calculating that by the sample size times, in this case, 20%. You can make it more or less. And here's where I set up my output pin, the trigger. And here's where I set up the echo, the input. I'm going to sum the median times, and it's just a variable. Uh, some more variables we need to do the math. Uh, here's a change, here's the time list. So this is going to store my list of input values. So all the stuff that's coming back, all the numbers that are coming back from the module, I'm going to store in that. This loop from here to down here is where we do a lot of the readings. So this is the uh, place where I track the number of samples. I'm going to run this loop uh, 50 times in this case, but whatever your sample size is. Here's where I set up my module to get ready to ping. And down here, as before, this is where we're going to ping, and then we're going to wait for the ping to come back. So we set this up, we turn on the trigger device, and then we shut it off so we give it a 10 microsecond pulse, a little bit longer than a 10 microsecond pulse to trigger that sonic ping and then we shut it off and then we wait. We wait for the echo to come back and we measure when the echo comes back. After that we take the pulse width. How long did it take for that signal to go out, that ping to go out and come back? And then here I'm going to append that time to the list of samples that we have. So this is just like a, an array or whatever you want to call it in earlier programming. This is just a list of stuff. So we're going to stick our reading on here one after another at the bottom. Uh, this is just a debug statement really. It gives me this list of numbers over here so I can see what's happening. It's not necessary. It just like tells you what's going on. Okay, then here I'm going to uh, sort my list. And just to make it a lot easier, uh, there's a function already to do this. You could write your own sort, but there's already a function to do it in Python, so I did that. It sorts it from low to high. And then here, I'm going to uh, sum up my times, sum up my median times from the list. So the loop is finished at this point right here. And I do my sort, and then I'm going to sum up the times. And down here, I'm going to take the distances, the sum of the distances. And this time around, instead of using the 17,150, I made it very explicit. I took the speed of sound and I took half a round trip. Uh, yeah, half a full round trip. Because you don't want to take the sound going out and back. That would be twice too far. You just want it going out. So I took half of that distance. And again, I wanted to make it explicit because I think before it was kind of implicit and not always clear. The average distance, I used the integer. Why did I take the integer? Because, frankly, the device, uh, I've seen it in different places, but the device's accuracy is like 0.3 to 1 centimeters. So there's no point in having two or three decimal places when the device can't really return that. So I just did an integer of it. And then here I check to see if, if the number coming back is within range. So the device's range is 2 centimeters to 400 centimeters. If, it's, if the answer, if the, the total answer comes out as within that range, then I print it. Otherwise, I give an error reading and I print the value anyway so that you can see, okay, how far off is it, what's going wrong here. And then I do the GPIO cleanup and I print done. And that's pretty much it. So by doing this, we can make the Pi give us back a lot more accurate readings than it would otherwise. But that's it for today. Hope you found it useful and interesting in your Pi experiments.